Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Ankit, and today I have with me Sanjana. So, Sanjana, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Hello, uh, I am Sanjana Puddar. I am pursuing electronics and computer engineering at BIT Chennai. I belong to the 2018 to 22 batch, and I'm currently in my final year. I have recently been placed at Microsoft. Thank you, Sanjana, and congratulations on that. Thank you. So, guys, this video will be about ECM, that is electronics and computer engineering at BIT Chennai. And we'll also come with a second video with Sanjana, and that would be about how to plan your uh, first three or four years at BTEC, basically. So let's begin with this video now. So Sanjana, how has your experience been at BIT Chennai so far? Okay, uh, so the three years I have spent at BIT Chennai, if I would have to sum up, I would say it's a really a unique kind of an experience of college and engineering. Mm -hmm. Uh, so starting with the learning perspective, if I, have, I would have to say, right from the FFCS that we are provided, the freedom we are provided with the FFCS, and then uh, the teachers, the kind of support from the infrastructure, the labs, and everything, the library, mm -hmm. and the college campus overall, it's mm -hmm. definitely, it's really nice. So that has been really great in a lot of aspects and apart from that life at UIT is or uh, has also been memorable uh, and this really helped me develop my personality and it's been great right right so last one year has been online right so how has that been has VIT? i mean is it is it is it nice is it as good as the offline classes how is it how was it uh, I would say it's not as good because uh, obviously like interacting with people face to face and online is quite different with all the classes, though the teaching is okay, more or less the same or uh, however the classes are going on the same way uh, with the same routine kind of routine, but then uh, still that interaction and that kind of uh, like used to have daily right. that is uh, a little, you know, there's a lot of boredom and stuff. Otherwise, it's fine. Right, right. And also we cannot help that. I mean, that is something that we have to live yeah. with. Right. Yeah. Okay. So how has your experience of ECM at VIT been? Uh, so this branch is kind of new, just been five years since it was introduced. So when you also joined, you must also be having some apprehensions in your mind. How is the branch going to be and everything? So how did it turn out so far? Uh, right. So actually, I had taken up ECM uh, because uh, when I was, I went for the counseling and when I was going to choose a branch for engineering, mm -hmm. I was the person who had an interest in a lot of different fields. So I was a little confused as to what to pick. So when I came across this one, which had the mix of the two cores, that is electronics and computer, I thought it would give me that uh, opportunity to explore further. So okay. I went up with that definitely there were uh, doubts in my mind as to firstly everyone thinks uh, placements after the engineering so uh, what about the placements and uh, it's a new branch no one really had heard about it uh, so about that as well and how would the mix be you know whether it would be more difficult and stuff like that but I took that chance because even the uh, people at the counseling the teachers they were quite um you know for for this branch and they were like it is as far as the others and it gives us a lot of opportunities so i went ahead with that and the experience i would say has been really great mm -hmm. the thought which i had in my mind that yeah i would explore i really got that chance so i got the choice to choose the subjects i wanted to take up like with the ffcs so uh, that way i got the chance you know, chance to explore and uh, it has been great and even in terms of placements, all the uh, doubts I had in my mind, uh, it, it was at par with the uh, CS if you would have to say. Okay, awesome, awesome. So how is the curriculum of ECM? Because you have to study both electronics and CSE. So how do they mix it and is, is enough importance given to both the portions or how is it? 
Uh, right. So actually, like we have the program cores and the other electives, which are the choices we take. So the program cores are divided in a way that we have equal elect the basics of electronics as well as the basics of computers. So for example, for electronics, we'll have all the uh, circuit uh, related subjects, whereas in as computer, we'll have the coding uh, fundamentals and all of that. So these are the basics which are taught. And then for the electives, the ones that we choose, uh, in that we are given an equal choice uh, every semester to choose the subjects we like. So uh, there are people who take up, for example, DVMS, and there are people who take up analog or digital electronics. So uh, that way uh, we get the chance to explore all these subjects. Okay. And uh, if not in one, in the next semester or the other, we can take up the other subjects as well. Okay, okay. all right. And uh, how is the curriculum? I mean, does it become hard because you have to study both? Because people say already that triple E, EC, these are harder than other branches. So how did you feel about it? Uh, I wouldn't say it is a hard in terms of just because it's the mix of both. Mm -hmm. I think uh, because the credits of the courses are ultimately given same to every branch. So that way, uh, I think the balance is maintained and uh, it's fine. It's not hard as one would assume okay, okay. so uh, another question that pops up after this is let's say you're appearing for an it company and also a csc student would appear for an it company so definitely that csc student has studied only csc subjects all four years and you have studied electronics also so that would definitely have some effect on i mean how much learnings you have and how much learnings maybe a csc student has and similar thing can be said for if you're appearing for an electronics company uh, you will compare with EC or triple E students. So some edge they could have over you. So how do you overcome that uh, basically, if, if, this, if this makes sense to you? Yeah, so uh, from my experience, what I would say is uh, firstly for the companies, it's better if you, if you apply for the uh, type of companies you are more interested in. Mm -hmm. So in if you want to apply for suppose CS companies, mm -hmm. then uh, uh, basic mostly they go for the basics, right? Like even in the online test, the basics of coding or the DSA and stuff. So all that is common, I would say. Above that, uh, when they are uh, talking about your projects or other subjects, so I think based on your interest, you have to go up for, uh, for those subjects and go to them. Otherwise, I would say the basics which are being tested are, are taught, uh, you know, similarly in ECM as well, like in CS and EC. So okay. that way, you'll have to do the extra bit if you are interested Got in the subject. Got it. So is, are there any particular subjects that you remember that you had to do separately uh, apart from your course that CSC students were maybe taught in the course itself? Uh, like uh, that, I wouldn't say is because it was taught to the CSC people mm -hmm. only. We were also offered, but uh, somehow uh, because of the credits, uh -huh. yeah, in electives, because of the credits, I couldn't take it up. So I had studied DBMS on my own. Because I thought it's an important uh, fundamental subject, which I should go through. So uh, somehow I couldn't take it up in my elective. So I had to go through that, just the basics on okay. my own, so that it would help me in the tests. Got it. So how were the faculties at the college? Uh, I would say most of the faculties are really uh, good, like uh, in terms of the response to the students and uh, how cooperative they are most of them are uh, really good and helpful okay, okay. and how was the infrastructure the labs uh, did you feel that something was insufficient or was everything adequate uh, like I think I mentioned, so I think the infrastructure is really good uh, at, a, at the college and even the labs and all the facilities, I think they are quite up to date and uh, it definitely helps us in our labs and the practicals that we have. Okay, okay, all right. And how are the internship opportunities that you get from the college? Uh, I would say uh, like in our uh, third year, uh, we get internship opportunities, summer internship opportunities from the college. Uh, the because there are a lot of students, the ratio of people being uh, selected by the companies is definitely less. But then there are opportunities. A lot of companies do come. So uh, I think uh, it's good enough. Okay, okay. And let's say if somebody does not get an internship through the college, then how is the response outside? Uh, I mean, in companies, if you apply individually outside the college, 
so how is the response from those companies because ultimately you have to do your internship from somewhere right so yeah i think uh, it's uh, normal there is no as such uh, you know problem we could easily get off campus internship as well okay all right uh, the next question is how is the placements going on so far for your batch uh i would say uh i think the pace is really good as compared to like people were saying because people were actually scared about it that because of the pandemic and the economic uh, condition of the you know country and what could happen to the placements mm-hmm. but i think the pace is uh, as it uh, is usually before the pandemic that is and uh, it's going on i think well uh, a lot of students have already been placed in just one and a half month of the placement season so yeah okay uh, a question that students often ask is uh, in your batch let's say for an example how many people do you think went for electronics companies and how many went for cse or did, did everybody went to uh, it companies how how did it happen um so far in the one and a half months we have had mostly csit companies coming in like the software ones so um, i think a lot of people the majority uh, have gone for uh, the csits at least given a shot so that uh, you know to just test their chances and i think there are very few who are waiting for the core electronics core companies which will be coming by the end of the year so yeah but majority uh, are inclined uh, towards the software ones okay just uh, one more question uh, in this regard in which year of your college or which semester uh, do you think students identify which interest in which field they are interested in like electronics or csc when do you figure this out uh personally i think i did in my third um, third year third or fourth semester so okay. uh, that time actually it comes after we are done with the core uh, subjects like the program course and when we have the choice to select the electives that's when we realize okay this is better or that will be easier for me or something so that is when we get the choices so uh, about the fourth semester which so is third or fourth Okay, so let's move on to the section where we will talk about uh, higher studies in ECM. So let's divide it into two parts: higher studies in India and in abroad. So uh, people from your batch would also be applying to abroad. So how do you think? How is the response to the ECM students? Uh, is this branch well well identified, or how is it? uh i personally don't have much idea about it i would say but uh, from a few friends very few friends i have heard from i think uh, the response is at par i think there is no uh, discrimination as such due to the branch and uh, yeah so we have equal opportunities okay 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 and in india people usually go for gate so how is uh, i mean are first of all many people have this doubt that are ecm students allowed in gate or not so how is that yeah so ecm students are uh, eligible for gate now here uh, the uh, actual advantage i would say is that they are eligible for both electronics as well as the csit paper so the students based upon their interest can take up any one of the gate papers okay, okay. all right and after that in psus uh, many people tell that ecm students are not eligible for jobs so do you know about this uh if uh, right from uh, the psus they actually uh, recruit from the gate scores based on the gate scores which is based on the paper you appear for so that way uh, ecf doesn't really come into the picture it's actually the paper you have appeared for and uh, in terms of the scope uh, yeah like in psus comparatively electronics uh, people have more scope of jobs than uh, cs because of the uh, just because of the number of uh, difference in the count of the jobs otherwise uh, i think there is equal opportunity there okay all right so lastly uh, any negative points about ecm or vit <laughs> that you would like to tell people about or let's not um, say negative some points that you think could be done better uh yeah like uh, in terms of ecm i would say uh someone if you already know that you are inclined towards computer software something i would say you should consider ecm as your second option and 
go for cs first because uh, just because you'll not have to spend your time into electronics and you can concentrate on the computer science subjects and now uh, we have some more specialization branches as well so maybe you could go for them uh, another reason for this point would be that uh, in terms of placement it is at par but then again it's like uh, 90% of the companies they do consider ecm as well the cs ones but sometimes that la- the 10 percent of times or uh, ecm is actually uh, sometimes not at all considered so uh, in that circumstances someone who is more interested might feel left out so i mean uh, ecm could be your second option if uh, if at all you don't get space or something otherwise if you are totally looking to explore ecm is a, a great branch yeah and uh, yeah i think that would be all right so sanjana i think we have covered uh, most of the points that a new joiner has in his mind any other suggestions or tips that you would like to give or any point that i missed out on you would like to add on um i would just say uh, uh the ffcs the one where you choose your subjects i think that is really important uh, once you discover what you like the ones you want to work on i think it's better we choose those subjects and uh, start planning ahead as to what you want to uh, go for whether it's higher studies or uh, placements or internships just uh, take the path a little earlier on and stay dedicated towards it All right thank you so much for joining me in this video and let's thank meet you. in the another video in which we will talk about uh, the other stuff like how to plan out your 3 or 4 years in the college yeah yeah sure thank you for watching this video i hope you found it useful do not forget to subscribe and join me on telegram thank you